We'll call to order the Board of Zoning Appeals. If you'll stand, please stand for the pledge. We'll ask Joe Machado to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Here. Joe Crowell. Here. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machado. Here. Michael Rather. Here. Jared Barrett. Here. Dane Cantrell. Present. We do have a quorum, and all voting members are present, sir. Okay, you have the minutes of the last meeting. Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? Who would be approved, Mr. Chairman? I have a motion to be approved. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. We have two items on our agenda tonight. And uh, the first one is a request by Bradley Scherer. And what do you have on that, please? Thank you. Chairman Cantrell, application BZA 2014-64 involves the property at 708 Furman Drive. They are requesting variance relief to reduce the five yard side yard setback for detached structures by two feet to three feet for a property located in, in the RM medium density residential zone. The applicant, Mr. Scherer, uh, is requesting this variants to allow him to uh, construct a detached garage with living area on the second floor. The detached garage will, will me measure 19 feet by 23 feet and it's approximately 460 square feet for each floor. Uh, the location of the garage is such uh, and it would allow him to utilize his existing driveway. Now, staff uh, considered, uh, reviewed his request and considered the criteria for variance relief, and we found that it, <coughs> the request failed to meet the criteria for variance relief. We were especially concerned also about the distance between the proposed structure and the adjacent, adjacent residential property whose home seems to be constructed closer than the required setback on that lot. And these are photos of that area between the two structures. This is the uh, a neighboring property, the surrounding area. Uh, it's in the Harvest Grove subdivision. And it's a relatively large subdivision lot at 0.73 acres. We did not receive any phone calls uh, inquiring about this particular application. But we are uh, concerned about the distances uh, between the structures. We do find that the request fails to meet the criteria uh, for variance relief and recommend denial. And if you see, this is the concept plan or site plan that the applicant supplied show that the garage will be located in the side yard. The structures, it, it, if you take the distance between this existing structure and the property line and the three feet that he's requesting, uh, you're looking at less than 10 feet between those two structures. And that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this? If you'll come around, please, to the podium. Come on. Okay, wait just a minute. We'll have a public hearing on that. <laughs> All right. After uh, each applicant has a chance to speak to the board, we will have a public hearing at that point. Then anyone may speak. You're online here. Oh, so she's in the pretty good. I'm 
I'm sorry. Um, she sums it up pretty good. I'm okay. Hi. You'll give us your name. My name is Brad Shearer. I'm at 708 Furman Drive in Murfreesboro. Do you have any additional information you want to share with the board? Um, no, she summed it up pretty well. I'm simply trying to put in a two-car garage uh, to conform with the look and appeal of the house. Um, I had a builder come out, and he said that we really need like 19 feet to put a two-car garage in there, and that envelope encroaches on the setback that's set up by the zoning board of the township. So filled out the, you know, the application, and here we are today. So it was really a matter of trying to fit in a two-car garage um, that didn't fit in that envelope. That's what we we're trying to do. There was also a setback from the house that he mentioned that you need a couple feet off the house to be a detached garage, and that pushed it over to the edge of a, you know, the property line. You have a lot of room back behind your house there. You just didn't want to extend the driveway. Is that the reason you didn't move we it? could move it back in the back of the house. Um, However, future planning, we wanted to put an in-ground pool in the, in the backyard there off the back patio at some point. Uh, the concern that I've got by looking at the, the drawing and stuff and looking at the drawing we've got here is with sitting in between those, both those houses right there, you go, you've got a roughly a 920 square foot structure that's going to be there in between them. You've got really, you've got code issues that are causing problems as far as, and you've got fire exposure problems. If that building was on fire, you've got an exposure problem for your neighbor and for yourself. And if you even put up a, a, a one-hour firewall on your neighbor's side, you've still got a problem when it coming out, of, if it comes up out of the roof, getting over into there. And also the same way when you're home. That's a concern that I've got. Uh, and I was wanting to ask you, would you, would you even consider what the chairman actually talked about, but maybe going back, that might alleviate some of the concerns that I've got just looking at the drawing. <coughs> it's certainly a valid concern, and we, that's why we have setbacks and things like that for fire carry and things like that. So I, that's why we're here, right, is to make sure that we don't put other people at risk. Um, I'd prefer not to go backwards um, because another option is, is to make a smaller, smaller building. Um, that's a one-car garage. That just may look strange compared to all the other two-car garages in the neighborhood. So I was trying to stay conform with the neighborhood, and you know, I guess I could put it back, move it back further in the yard. But now you have a building in the middle of the backyard. I, one one of the things that we have to look at is not just right now. Uh, with your building, but also 10, 20 years down the road. You're not there, you're sold out. Nobody really knows that that could be a fire hazard. So that's one of the <laughs> things that we look at in our long range planning. So you may have to make some adjustments there. Any, Joe? Uh, just looking at this, the layout that's up there, it looks like you're awful close to the right hand property line. Are you within the variance, I mean, of the setback on the right hand property line? Either that or the sketch is wrong. I mean, you know, it looks like whatever sticks out there, whether it's a fireplace or whatever, looks like it's hitting the line. Oh, that's a, yeah, it's an air conditioner concrete pad. Oh, okay. Uh, we didn't build the home. We were, we're the second owner. Well, you said you were looking at putting a pool in the backyard. Uh, where are your septic tank and lines at back there? To, because you're not going to be able to put a pool where that's at. Correct, and that's not part of today's hearing that was just future thought but it would be over to yeah, the but left, you said back that's... left of the house right behind where that that building would be and the back left of the house it's approximately 30 feet from the lines of okay where the but you is. you would consider moving it back well if i do that then there's there's no pool but okay i would probably i would probably not do that i would probably look to make a smaller structure or something or just not do it at all you know go ahead jerry um i mean we've got to consider what you've asked for and one of our criteria for a variance is that you have to establish a hardship why you can't build it where it's supposed to go <coughs> out any way
Sure. Um, So uh, to be transparent, I guess there's no reason why I couldn't put it back there other than it would just look odd and I'd have to put a lot more concrete in there than I wanted to. And then you you turn know, your you, microphone on. You want to have a we would like if we were do it to do a pool, we'd like to have it you know, close proximity to the house. I understand. Supposed to be out in the yard, but. OK, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. you may be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. If you'll come around to the podium, give us your name <coughs> and any information you'd like to share. Yes, I'm Taylor Lilly. I'm the president of the Homeowner Association for the Harvest Grove Section 4. And I actually have a letter from the neighbors who live beside them about how they are also the, share the same concerns that y'all have about Plus the, their resale value and how close it will be to the lot. That and two, Brad Shearer has actually, um, we have a HOA where we have to fill out the art committee and all that to approve it. And it has been, it has not been approved because of the, he's wanting to go the three feet instead of five. And our HOA covenants actually show that, you know, the five feet off the lot. So the five feet off the lot. And we have actually had two other people who have sent an art request who kind of had the same situation. One of them did build a one-car garage, and we have had them where they have had to push it back. So we're in the mindset of, we've already had two people who've asked for it, we've said no, and like I said, it's in our HOA covenants and restrictions that you have to be five feet off the lot. And like I said, I do have a letter here from the neighbor who is closed, because <coughs> they moved their house to the side so that one day they could build a detach whenever they built their property. So. Any questions? Thank you. you. May be seated. Will anyone else? We'll close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we deny the request based on the facts of what the staff recommended and the concerns that the committee has had. Have a motion to be denied. We have a second. I'll second it. Have a second. Call the roll, please. Carrie Farley? Yes. Joe Crowell? Yes. Joe Machado? Yes. Harry Sartain? Yes. Thank Cantrell? Yes. Motion carries, sir. It is denied, and uh, you may want to check with the planning people and come back with uh, another proposal if you choose to do so. It's got to meet our requirements. If it doesn't meet the requirements, we don't have any other choice but to turn these requests down. If a request meets the requirements, then we don't have any choice but to approve it. <laughs> and uh, sometimes folks that are here don't un really understand that. We've got a strict criteria which we have to follow. But we thank you both for being here tonight. The next item we have is a request by Dewanda Spearman. And what do you have on that, please? New application 2014-65 involves the property located at 522 Sandra Drive. Uh, Ms. Spearman is requesting special exception approval for the establishment of a group child care home upon the property which is located in the RM medium density residential zone. The site is a 0.45 acre parcel and Ms. Spearman is, is seeking the special exception so she can keep five to seven children in her home and provide daycare services Monday through Friday, uh, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The um, applicant, this is the applicant's home, and she indicated that uh, there is some turnaround area, because I know that's one of the criteria that we take into consideration, as well as the state, where cars have an ability to back up on the property where they don't have to back out into the street. These are for parents dropping and picking up their children. Uh, there is a play area that's designated and fenced for the, the backyard that will also be inspected by the state. The children, uh, the ages of the children will be from infant to school age. And because of it being in the range of five to seven children, uh, a special exception is needed. If it were four, then she would not even have to appear before you. But she will have to obtain the state licensing for the family child care home and meet all of the requirements um, there, which is also uh, in our code, some of those are. 
And we received several calls uh, about this request. However, it was, um, uh, they wanted clarification on what exactly was occurring because of the terminology that we've used. But once it was explained to them that it was just a child care facility, uh, they indicated that they had no concerns or objections to the request. We found that the request met the criteria for uh, this use and we recommend approval. And I'm just going through the slideshows, showing you some photos of the site itself. We posted a sign on the property, and that concludes our presentation. Do we have anyone here representing this request? If you'll come around to the podium, please, and give us your name and any additional information you'd like to share. My name is Dewanda Spearman. My address is 522 Sandra Drive, and I was just requesting um, to turn my garage area, kitchen, and living room area into a child care home for five to seven children. Joe. I guess the only problem I see is you're going to put a turnaround area, but that's not going to stop people from backing out on the road. Uh, would you consider putting a loop to come out of your, come around your front yard out? Well, I was up in the backyard in front of the garage. There's actually a small area, and I stated as well that in the front yard, I'm going to block off a piece of the yard for if they back all the way in, that they can turn back in right there and then pull back out into the street. Yes, yep. sir. Yeah, but how are, how are we going to guarantee that they're not going to back out on the road and cause a safety hazard? In my contract that they sign at the beginning of their okay. term. Okay. Uh, seems like to me there was something else, but uh, that's up. Jerry? This, this is your home. You'll be living there. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. We have a motion on it. Move be approved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion to be approved. Second. I have a second. Uh, I would like to add something to the motion if I could. Uh, I think the last one we did, we had, we put an exception in there. I'd say no more than seven children, which is what she has on there. But also, if she happens to leave the residence, that this goes away. This exception goes away. I, I guess let me respond two ways. One, procedurally, I think the motion, what, there was a motion to approve and it was seconded. So I think before we discuss a, a possible change, that motion needs to be, uh, I mean, you can voice those concerns that you want to maybe have that added on, but I think we need to procedurally vote on that motion that was already seconded. But go ahead, unless... In, he, he could make it in as far as an amendment to the motion. He could do that, yes, and you all can vote on that. But I, I think we need to handle it procedurally correctly on that yeah um, okay then well, I, let's I'll, see if it's going to be accepted here is that yes you want to make a motion to amend it then we'll vote on the amendment then after the is that accepted I, I, I think that it's a little bit backwards I wish he would have said it first I think maybe we should um, I can retract the motion and we'll make it again okay we'll why don't we do the that motion, retract the second you want to make amendment I think he, well, let me, you, let me stop you, him. He needs to make a motion to approve it with his amendment. With, with, okay. If he wants to do that. Yes, I'd like to make an amendment to his motion. Just make the motion. Oh, make the motion? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I move Here. to approve it with these exceptions. No more than seven. And that it will, the, uh. Other one. Perhaps it's with change of ownership. It, it would go away if, yeah, if yeah, they... Yeah, that, that once she moves, once she leaves the residence, that, that it's no longer available to have a child care there. Uh, I, you know, I don't have any objection to that about it going away, but if, like, if they move, you know, is this following them anyway? What is your, what is your all's position on that? Well, I, I know 
that this type of scenario was specifically discussed at the training last month and uh, we were advised that any conditions that were placed on a request had to be specifically on one of the outlined conditions in the code. And we do not have anything about the use lapsing upon the sale and transfer of the property. Oh, but we should. Okay. <laughs> we have we have a motion with these two requirements on it. Okay, that it goes away, and no more than seven children. Okay, that's the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a second. Call the roll, please. Gary Farley. Yes. Joe Crow. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Cantrell. Yes, it is approved. Do we have any anything else? No. To come before you mean we're through? <laughs> through early today. All right. Great job, everybody. We are adjourned. <laughs>